And we're rolling. Overview of the Bible. Philemon. We're picking up in the little uh, letter. Uh, probably I refer to it more as a postcard called Philemon or Philemon. or There's all kinds of different pronunciations that people use for this. And Paul's writing to Philemon uh, from prison. He's writing about Onesimus, uh, Philemon's runaway slave. Uh, and he says he's now, he's more than a slave, because his Onesimus has become, he's been converted. And he's a, he's a brother, he's a believer. And uh, he's helping Paul in uh, service to him while Paul's in prison. Paul probably wrote this uh, during his first imprisonment in Rome around uh, 62 A.D., and, and, uh, and so he's writing just as an exhortation pretty much to uh, Philemon some instructions of how he, how he sh- thinks you know, he should act towards Onesimus. And he, he puts in here encouragement, says, I know that you're going to do this, but just in case, I'm just going to let you know this is what I think. And so uh, just picking up in 1-1, one, one, we could probably read the whole postcard in just a matter of a couple minutes. But in here it says, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved brother and fellow worker. So here, uh, Timothy's with Paul. He's, he's writing, uh, we said probably from Rome in the prison. And it says, And to Aphia, our sister, and to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So just a salutation, a greeting uh, to several people and the church that is in your house. So there was a meeting that's happening here in, in the house of Philemon. It's kind of uh, in his in his town in his area, he's probably the uh, the you know gathering place for for believers. And it goes on to say, uh, verse four: I thank my God always, making mention of you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. And I pray that the fellowship of your faith may become effective through the knowledge of every good thing which is in you for Christ's sake. For I've come to have much joy. This is verse seven, and comfort in your love. Because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, brother. Therefore, though I have enough confidence in Christ uh, to order you to do that which is proper, yet for love's sake I rather appeal to you, since I am such a person as Paul the aged and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. So he's saying, I think you'll do the right thing, but just in case you don't, I want to give you a little motivation, a little instruction. He says, I think I've got enough authority to command you to do the right thing in the Lord. And... uh, and then he goes on to say what this right thing is. In verse, verse 10, it says, For I appeal to you for my child whom I have begotten in my imprisonment, Onesimus. So Paul's brought Onesimus into a relationship with Jesus while he's in prison, while Paul's in prison, who formerly was useless to you, but now is useful both uh, to you and to me. So he's admitting that Onesimus was not a good slave. He wasn't a good servant. Uh, he sent, a, sent him back to you in person, seeing that uh, in sending away my very heart, so Paul's really attached to Onesimus now, but he's feeling like he needs to send him back to Philemon. He doesn't want, he, you know, in one sense he doesn't want to because he's, he's been very helpful for Paul while Paul's in prison. Uh, he says, verse 13, Whom I wish to keep with me, that in, in your behalf he might minister to me in my imprisonment for the gospel. Uh, but without your consent, I didn't want to do anything, that your goodness should not be as if it were by compulsion, but of your own free will. So once again, he's just appealing to Philemon, and this is a good thing for any of us, We're, we shouldn't be under just compulsion to do what's right, but it should be something that's coming from our heart. And so that's what this whole letter is. It's like, I know, I pretty well know you're going to treat Onesimus the right way, but if you're not thinking that clearly right now, I just want to give you some guidelines. Uh, in verse 15, for perhaps uh, he was for this reason parted from you for a while that you should have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Now, I'm not sure exactly what he's saying, in the flesh, a beloved brother, uh, maybe just because of their closeness. I don't think that he was a natural brother, but I don't know by that statement. But he says he's much more a brother to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Uh, and if, in verse 17, if then you regard me a partner, accept him as you would me. But if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it, lest I should mention to you that you owe to me even your own self as well. So Paul's saying, you know, if you're not willing to, to take care of him as you should, uh, and he owes you anything, put it in my account. But, you know, do you remember that you owe me? even your own life. And so Paul's saying, 
I think you're going to treat them right. I think you're going to do it right. But here, if you had any inclination not to do what you should, uh, you can charge it to me. But remember that, you know, you owe me. <laughs> it's interesting in this passage. You know, we see a little human interaction here. Uh, he says in verse 20, then, Yes, brother, let me benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Having confidence in your obedience. Here he's trying to give affirmation. I believe you're going to do what's right. I write to you since I know that you will do even more, even more than what I say. So, you know, Paul's encouragement here is, I trust you as a brother. I'm giving you some guidelines. I don't think I really need to have them because I'm confident you're going to do well. Uh, and then he says, and at the same time, verse 22, he's making preparations for future uh, contact. He says, at the same time, also prepare me a lodging. For I hope that through your prayers I shall be given to you. So he's hoping that through the prayers that are being offered there by Philemon and the house, the, ch the church that's in his house, that God's going to release him from prison. He's going to be released and he can come to Philemon. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you as do Mark. Remember Mark's the one that Paul had problems with in, in the first missionary journey because Mark left. But Mark has become a real asset to Paul now. And he says, uh, as do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, now remember at the end of 2 Timothy, which is a book written later than Philemon, that Demas has uh, loved the world and gone back to the world, and Luke, my fellow workers. So uh, we see that there's a, there's a group, you know, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus. So that guy's Epaphras looks like he's in prison with Paul. And then he, he just ends it by this, says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. And so a uh, short little postcard, exhortation to, to, to do what's right. I think you will do what's right, but Paul's just trying to encourage him and saying, I, I believe you're even going to do more than is, is necessary. And I, I really don't need to write this to you, but I just want to remind you. And, and here, you're getting back your slave, no longer just a slave, but also a brother in the Lord, Onesimus.